welcome back. We're on a journey to Mars, and unlike Elon, we're going back in time. This is entirely new research, and I hope you enjoy the conclusions at the end. It is really mind-blowing. We'll be using our Welsh dictionaries as the living remnant of ancient British language to lead our investigation into the meaning of the word Mars and what ideas our ancient ancestors were trying to convey to us. If you're new to the channel, welcome. You might like to watch the videos Ancient British is the Key and I of Horace explained to see why we use the Welsh dictionaries and for your better enjoyment. Please ring the bell so you receive videos in the right order and I hope you enjoy them more. So let's go over now to Wikipedia and look at the Roman god of war, Mars. Here, here is the Roman god of war. There it is, god of war. He says he's identified with the Greek god Ares. Interesting to note here that in Old Latin, his name was Mavors. Here it says, the wild animals most sacred to Mars were the woodpecker, the wolf and the bear, which in the natural law of the Romans was said always to inhabit the same foothills and woodlands. The woodpecker was so sacred to the Romans that they were not allowed to kill or eat woodpeckers. So let's put this into a summary. Here we have Latin Mars Mavors in the British ancient tradition there is no V sound or uh, so it is would that would be pronounced Mavors and in Welsh Mawoth means Mars and Moor means great at the TH it means greatness in Welsh, Dith Mawth is Tuesday, the day of Mars. In Latin, Tuesday is Dies Martis, again the day of Mars, and that is the same in French, Mardi. And in French, the word jour means day, so they have inherited D from the Latin, and the Latin may have inherited it from the ancient British, as shown in the Welsh language. So we have Mars, Mouth, Greatest, and um, the Roman god Mars is represented by the bear, which is Arth in Welsh, and in the heavens, the, the constellations Plough and Ursa Major are connected to Arth, or the, uh, uh, the bear, there it is, Ursa Major, the great bear, but also a plough is an Ar Ad in Welsh. And this component R means upon, and conceptually, the celestial heavens above are upon us from above. The wolf in Welsh is a bella, and um, the ancients often used everyday objects to convey notions of abstract meanings so in this sense the wolf conveys bell which means war and we can see this taken into the mesopotamian gods names bell and baal but bella is also implies um, belly moor whose emblem was the wolf and that constellation in the heavens above us is now known as the greek kephius cepheus and um, it's right at the top of the celestial heavens. Here is the woodpecker, and there are two words of interest in the Welsh language for woodpecker, delor and coblin. Delor means approach, bulges out, and coblin is a cloak, round, thump, blin, angry, to flay. And these words are important when we consider what the ancients 
thought of Mars, and we will investigate that later on. So there we have the Latin. We also um, have the association with the Greek eres, and in Welsh that is ar es or ar as. And again, the most important component of the name is ar, which means upon or infers something from above. And again, this is how they saw Mars in ancient times. Um, the R sound is in the bear, Arth, the plough, Arad, and this suffix uh, may mean he or it. In the Norse tradition, we can have a quick look at the Norse tradition here. It's the, generally rendered the god as Mars, it's the god of war in the Norse tradition and we have um, various um, origins of this word Tyr. We have Tua, Tiwaz, meaning God. The Tiwaz rune is the up arrow. Um, tu, Zu, so on. So let's put that in our, well let's look at that in our summary. We have a number of words in the Norse tradition. Tur, Tur, are directly translatable in Welsh to tower pile, bluster storm. Tiu, Ziu, implies Diu, which is God. And we can see the origin perhaps of the word Zeus or Diu in the French language for God. The Tiwaz sign is the up arrow and represents the letter T. And um, you can see here in the Mars icon that we have a circle with the, the Tiwaz arrow. Some people say it is a shield with a spear, but I think it is Mars as viewed from Earth. Um, in the Norse tradition, we also get Tiwa and Tor. And in, uh, in the Welsh translation, that would be Tor, which means bull in English. Let's go a little further afield and back in time. So we've now gone back to 2500 before current era and the Akkadian god of war was called Nergal. Let's have a quick look at Nergal. Here he is. That's his um, cuneiform name. His planet is Mars. God of war plague, death and disease. Nergal. That is directly translatable by Welsh. Ner, Lord Chief, frequently of a god. The Lord. Gal. Gal is the root for these mourning, grief, massacre, all the sorts of things that a god of war is doing. So that's what Nergal means as trans translated using Welsh. And this uh, cuneiform name um, doesn't actually read Nergal. So let's have a quick look. I have translated each individual um, sign. We have An which is the star sign, that's quite common. Gur, Abgu, and Gal. So the Gur would imply Gur, Ad in Welsh, since there is no Gur on its own, and that means mourning, piteous. So we have this, this sense of grief. The Gal sign is means great. There it is. And we are now um, getting the um, the word for great mouth in Welsh um, meaning Mars. So we have great here in Nergal. In the Sumerian, that's a thousand years earlier at 3500 before current era, 
the god of war and Mars was represented by Gu Gal Anna. So we see the same An sign for God. Um, and we see the same um, Gal sign meaning greatest. We put the greatest in here. We've also got this sign at the front um, for bull. And this sign for the bull is called Gu, Gud, or Gur in phonetically in Sumerian. That's where we get the Gu um, part of the name from. Translated in Welsh, we have Gwe and Gwade with a D is blood and woe and gwer with the r means to descend so we almost get a sense a sense of this um deluge coming down from above of devastation and woe and blood and murder and grief and this is how the ancients saw mars what else have we got so let's go on in sanskrit there it is mangala planet mars day tuesday god of war even the sanskrit is translatable by welsh man ban is place summit at the highest point above and we have the gal the greatest from um akkadian sumerian and it means mars and that has migrated into the indian language mangalabara is mars day tuesday bringing this all together just looking at the europe map I have identified all the countries that have a word for Tuesday that is associated with Mars and has a root, a common root in the ancient British language and no other origin. And I've colored those countries in, all of them. I tried very hard to find out the original word for Tuesday in Iceland. It's now, I think, called either the second day or something like that. So if there are any viewers from Iceland, please put in the comments below if you know what the ancient word for Tuesday was in Iceland. And anyone else, if you have any comments, that would be great. So what is the conclusion when we have the whole of Europe's disparate communities and um, cultures, and we're, we, we're talking even about subcultures or regional cultures um, like Galicia and Catalonia. And how, how is it that these people can have the same origin for their day of Tuesday as the Sumerians and as the people who spoke Sanskrit, whose language languages were not supposed to have any antecedents. The only conclusion can be that is the ancient British language is the source, the common source of all these languages. And I hope you have enjoyed that demonstration because we can do the same demonstration on all the planets. All of the planets and all of the stars have a common origin, a common language that describe them. So I hope you have enjoyed that. And I hope that you. Subscribe and join the channel. Thank you very much.